Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome to From the Depths version 2.6.1.4 in the dev test. Yes, the big update has finally hit uh, the dev test branch of From the Depths. It's got lots of new features, my notes aren't in order at all, and so let's go through them in no particular order at all. So this is uh, the most important thing is... why is the resource thing on? Uh, the most important thing is that this is the strategic campaign AI update, and we'll be uh, jumping into the campaign a little bit uh, later in the video, so you can have a squiz at how it all works now. It's simultaneously uh, much more interesting, it's a little bit more complex, but at the same time it's less grindy, so that's all pretty good things. But there's lots of other stuff besides, and we're going to go through it in no particular order now. Uh, starting with that the build menu is different, so... It's been ordered in a way that is more logical for building a craft from scratch, because you start with new blueprints, uh, you go with blocks, and then propulsion, control, uh, resources, AI, uh, power, small ox turrets, and all the weaponry and stuff, countermeasures, decorations, uh, misc, and uh, hull prefabs are counterintuitively right at the bottom. This is a new tab, by the way, there's a few new tabs here. Uh, for those of us who are lazy, you can just plonk down a complete hull uh, just from this menu and it's actually very useful it's uh the hulls I probably wouldn't use this uh, too much unless I'm feeling really lazy because I kind of prefer the hulls uh, I'm kind of used to the hulls that I make myself now but uh, these are good these are not bad hulls they're in fact pretty good and they come in all shapes and sizes uh, excuse me yeah oh yeah that, I want to go there so, this, like, this tank holes and all that kind of stuff. The wheels aren't going to show up because this is a fortress. In any case, it's just handy for old and new players alike, and just very good news. And so, yeah, that's all this stuff. There's lots of new prefabs, lots and lots of new prefabs. There's new engines, and there's new uh, other things, like new engines. There's, uh, like, this new countermeasures tab. And there's even a uh, pre-made uh, what on earth? There's even a uh, pre-made. Why is this not coming with a bloody? Okay, this doesn't come with a turret, but it is a pre-made uh, like uh, anti-missile cannon. And if you go in here, uh, there's prefabs for pretty much every single category. Uh, there's some of the old ones, the Mamba and Copperhead were there before, but now there's brand new ones. And the quality, I think, varies a little bit. These are not intended to be, like, super efficient or super powerful um, uh, prefabs. And, like, for good reason, because, like, uh, if they were, like, there'd be no point in learning how to play the game. So, yeah, it's, like, lots of new prefabs to help you get started. It's all organized very nicely. And there's new blocks, so down here, in the advanced cannon section, you got your ammo controller. And we're already used to the two module and the one module um, uh, cust ammo customizers, which is quite handy. Sometimes you only want uh, an odd number. And like, the two, the two one has been there from the beginning. Now, there's one with four, which is also why uh, the appearance of the old ones has been uh, adjusted a little bit so it doesn't look so weird. This is very helpful because it allows you to have very, very long shells without being ridiculously long itself because if you say have a small craft, uh, you don't want an ammo customizer say, okay, let's say we want a shell that has eight components long. So one, two, three, four. Uh, for a very small craft, this is a, a, a lot of the length of it. But uh, now, it can be boop, boop, just two, so eight, eight, and it's absolutely gorgeous, and just saves you having to actually waste a lot of space just with ammo customizers, which always kind of bugged me. So, that's awesome, that's new, that's great. Uh, tractor beam roll option, I, where's Misk, let's have a look at that. There's a lot of random stuff in here. Tractor beam? Tractor beam. Oh. What on earth is this? Do do do. 
Oh yeah, so hold roll. Yeah, this is new. This is a new UI actually. Although I haven't looked at this thing for ages. That's handy. And guess that means you can uh, have sub vehicles do different stuff. And there's also a new chair here, which uh, uh, confused me earlier because maybe it's a bug, but uh, these things don't seem to have any difference. One of them. Yeah, they appear to do exactly the same thing, and I'm not entirely sure why. The point is the default chair elevates you uh, off the ground by one meter, but uh, the new chair doesn't. At the moment, uh, for me, uh, both of these chairs are elevating uh, Rambot by one meter. So if I have this, let's go here. We'll see. Boop, 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 boop. We'll see what Rambot is directly staring at. Staring directly at that. Staring directly at that, because he is two meters tall. And that appears to be bugged for me, because it's just the new chair and what it does. Okay. Let's have a look over here, because the next thing is the anti... Uh, I think this is the... What is it? Just in the patch notes it says... AMCC, which I think is Anti-Missile Cannon Controller. Where are you? I have to go find these things again. Wait, no, it's in countermeasures. I'm a genius. So this might be different. Yep, it's added in altitude bracket. So this is something that was badly needed because I virtually never uh, used uh, anti-missile cannons simply because the I have got the torpedo defense covered, and the anti-missile cannons I've always used have always wasted their time shooting at torpedoes, uh, rather than uh, shooting at missiles. That's possibly because I'm just bad at making them and don't, haven't had much practice, but this is just the freaking best, because uh, it means that you can actually let the above, ground, uh, above water sea whiz do its job, and I have my lovely torpedo popping turrets underneath, and that they can do their job, and it's absolutely brilliant. And I need to customize uh, my torpedo poppers now, I think about it. So that's awesome. And there's also a few changes to build mode. Like, you can disable uh, uh, pumps in caps lock. So basically what that means is you can disable uh, the... I think that means you can disable the air pump effect. Let's uh, just do this quickly. And let us spawn in a hull prefab just for giggles. Like so. I'm gonna drop an air pump in here. Water, air pump, caps lock, and do 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 do. Nope, it's not there, but uh, it's got something to do with uh, disabling air pumps. Ooh. Configured in settings. Where, ooh, which settings are that? Build options. Do, 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 do. Aha! Disables pumps calculation when vehicle is frozen. Great. Ah, and that's to say performance. That's lovely. Lovely, lovely, jubbly. You wouldn't think I've been messing around with this for hours before recording, would you? This is all kind of new uh, to me as well, still. And, uh... Oh yeah, there's area erase in uh, prefab mode. So what that means is you boot up a prefab and do this and you'll see there's a skull right here. There's the Grim Reaper himself and say I don't like this slopey bit, but let's say I don't like the back because it's like that. What I can do here is erase all blocks inside the current bounding box. Ta-da! Beautiful. Mmm, didn't quite get it. Um, let's do it again. Ta-da! That is amazing. That will... If you ever want to delete a huge amount of... That is going to be such a time saver because you can delete literally hundreds of blocks, like, almost instantly. And there's another feature that is uh, definitely worth uh, talking about, and this is going to be another uh, great feature. Oh my goodness, this is huge. Uh, let's go for something... Like that. Okay, so here is an engine, which I got off the, uh, uh, the UFEP. And say so I place this engine, and I'm like, oh, dang it, I didn't actually want this engine. There's a new function 
uh, shift delete will delete um, a block and all uh, of the connected blocks to it of the same system. So what that means is I'm hovering over an exhaust block and it just deleted all the exhaust. So if we do that again, or wait, no, control Z, thank God for control Z, it's so good. If we do that on the engine itself, it gets rid of all the engine components and just leaves the exhaust and you can do it again and it's just woohoo this is, this is like really such handy time-saving features because like so many now like you would be able to build a battleship like in minutes and will make building large craft a lot easier because it means that if you get a few hours down the line realize you made a mistake at an early stage that will set you back like way too much you can just well you can don't even have to control z it you can just do this and ta-da easy so yeah that's awesome there's also a block search tool so over here in the build menu uh what used to be the building checklist which i kind of liked actually it was a quite a handy feel there's now a search function it's like okay where uh, where is a block? So, okay, I can't remember where, say, radar decoys are. So, radar... Decoy. Alright, let's go find that. And it takes us to it, right there. And let's say, let's say I'm dumb and I've forgotten where port hole metal. Yay! There it is. It's even selected, so I can do that. Why is my paintbrush red? Box of crystals. Oh, I just got distracted. Okay, so, all kinds of cool stuff. Now, in the campaign, uh, there is... Oh my god, I don't understand my own notes. We'll probably get into that a little bit. Uh, oh yeah, material cap and replacement. So, in the campaign, uh, we'll just look at the map for now because it's pretty. It's also very smooth at the moment. This is a big map. I never appreciated how big this map was. Someone who, someone who knows math, tell me how big this map is. It's big. In any case, uh, there is a global material cap and replacement, and if you select the right option for it, uh, the global material limit, which is the materials used by all factions, uh, will never will always stay the same. So, like in order, it'll basically you'll never run into a situation where the world has run dry, because uh, if materials drop below a certain point. Uh, Basically, uh, resource nodes across the world will start refilling, and so you'll never be stuck uh, with a budget of zero, and no faction will be stuck with a budget of zero, and that's really awesome. Uh, AI is also strategic. There's no more uh, garrisons across these tiles. Uh, they're much more mobile. They're much more strategic. They'll move around here, there, and everywhere. If you don't watch uh, Bacon's TV, uh, you should, because he's got a number of videos uh, on uh, the development of the From the Depth Strategic AI worth watching. And the AI will also position itself uh, before a battle. So if you place your sources, uh, sources, forces one way, it'll also position them uh, so to better counter what you're doing. So that's pretty awesome. And also, also, there uh, with the camera. Uh, ordinarily, what would happen if you slow the game down is that uh, the camera slows down as well. That's been changed. So we're. Um, at 0.1 speed, and let's just demonstrate that by spawning in uh, a thing that I've never seen before, the smoker, and spawning in the fire style. Yeah, let's have a look at new stuff. What's the Conestoga? So it's like this, we're moving at a real slow rate, this is one tenth speed. What the balls is this? Is this an amphibious tank? It is an amphibious tank, and you'll notice that the camera is as fast as it usually is. This thing is awesome! I love it! Oh, slow mo. Anyway, the camera is as fast as it usually is, and that is absolutely lovely. And in the game, so, if you click on an enemy, like this one, it brings up detailed information. So this is the Conestoga and tells you all about it, maximum speed, maximum altitude, uh, ground locked, uh, doesn't have an objective, and the amount of material, all the resources carrying, it's all terrain, and RTG energy, da 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 da. This thing's powered by RTGs? What? That's awesome. In any case, 
That's pretty cool. Wow, that is the slowest fight ever. That's really cool. I love it so much. And AI, naval behavior, uh, checks firepower rather than number of weapons. So, to demonstrate that, let us uh, set the game back to normal speed and just spawn in a friendly thing. Let's spawn in a bastion. Right, so this is our bastion. It's got auto-generated naval behavior. And so now, uh, the naval AI for a long time now has kind of been a black sheep of AI functions because it's bloody stupid. But uh, it's been made a little bit smarter in that, uh, say, this thing is asymmetrical and it has a gun pointing... Pointing... Uh, this way. That way. Pointing that way. So, it's got uh, more guns on this side than it does on this side. And it's a... Uh, in the old days, what it would calculate the number of weapons on each side, and that's the side it would turn to face the enemy. Uh, now, it calculates total firepower, so... It's a little bit more accurate, because when you hit Q on a weapon, or hit V on anything, it's got a firepower uh, uh, rating, and it calculates what firepower is pointing in which side, and whichever side has the most, it'll do that. Which means that if you've got uh, a ship with like uh, lots of secondary guns just on the side, which point one direction, but not the other. If, say, all the guns on one side gets destroyed, uh, the ship will turn around and uh, start fighting with the healthy side, which is very nice, until it collides with something. So, yeah, that is a thing. Next page. Uh, lots of changes to APS, by the way. So, APS is generally a lot tougher than it used to be, so the mantlets are all stronger, a lot of the components are stronger, uh, auto loaders are once again a lot more expensive. You'll uh, see here uh, they're all jumped in price a little bit uh, by 20%. However, they're a lot more durable. So uh, their health of a one uh, block size auto loader has gone from 80 health per block to 300. So lots of health, and it's gone from 7 armor to 20 armor. So. Yeah, that is, a, that is a lot of health. I think, it didn't say in the patch notes, but I think they've also done the same for clips. And I think this is just to make uh, APS deck guns a little bit more viable, because uh, usually you should never use them, because it's stupid. They're very fragile, very explosive, they get blown up too easily. But with ammo ejectors and with uh, stronger and tougher autoloaders and clips, uh, that should be a little bit more viable. So that's a good thing. And there's a number of changes to SeaWiz, so let's uh, go look at the countermeasures again. And let's look at the SeaWiz, which does not come with a turret. Whoop. What the balls just happened? There we go. So this is a little weird. Why is this 40 millimeters? Why is the... There we go. That was weird. Still working on it. Dev test! Nothing you see here is fully finished yet. In any case, so, while we're looking at this uh, SeaWiz, planted funny, uh, SeaWiz targets get distance-based uh, priority bonus, which basically means that uh, the closer a thing is, uh, the more priority it's given. And SeaWiz current target gets 100% priority bonus. What that means is, is that, let's spawn in uh, this thing again. So, it's all about priority, and priority uh, for this uh, anti-missile cannon controller is the the thing with the highest priority is the thing that gets shot at first, and the current target gets 100% bonus priority, which means it'll keep shooting at a missile until it's actually destroyed, uh, which is a great thing, because uh, in my own horribly failed experiments with uh, the anti-missile cannons, uh, they just uh, they have a rotten habit of switching targets too fast and not actually blowing anything up, so that should uh, help a lot. Okay, and Siwa's damage multiplier against missiles has gone from five times to eight times. So if we spawn in, oh, I don't know, a Siwa's flak shell and set that to 60 millimeters. So uh, that number times eight, which is ooh, roughly a thousand actually, which is a lot. Which means that, like, even a small uh, flat gun will do a lot of damage uh, to anything uh, it's shooting at. Let's get it to something like... 
that. So, just shy of like 800 uh, damage to missiles and a pretty decent radius uh, for a 52mm APS gun, which means there's now uh, actually something useful for tiny APS guns to do. They can kill missiles pretty easily. Haven't tested that yet, but that's what I'm assuming, so... And Sea Whiz won't target missiles within minimum range. Another good thing, because you don't want them to shoot at things too close. Uh, da, 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 where is that thing? Uh, range bracket. So, if we do this... Doop, doop. Doop, doop, doop. Alright, let's say that's 200 meters. Uh, any uh, cannon controlled by this uh, AMCC uh, won't shoot at missiles that are within uh, 211 meters of it. Which is great, because that's the range that you can have something else uh, start doing work, like a uh, lambs or something like that. Meh. Okay, that's also pretty good. Now, ejectors as well, while we're talking about APS. Uh, they're cheaper, so. They're very cheap, so. Really trying to push um, players into using these things. I always forget that these things exist. Uh, I've got, Believe me, I've gotten comments about that. Uh, mostly because... Uh, the use for them is a little bit limited if you want to fully encase uh, an APS system in armor and within a hull because, okay, the shells get ejected, uh, but where do they go? But since uh, deck guns are now a little bit more viable, uh, these things will work very well for that. You can just have uh, ammo ejectors uh, on your deck guns and you have something cheap, you can have something that just sits on top, fires away and doesn't blow itself up, which is very, very neat indeed. You can also make Sea Wiz guns like that, which is really cool. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, they're also more durable, which I would argue, again, it's to make uh, deck guns a little bit more viable. That's actually really... I guarantee you somebody is just going to make a ship uh, out of these things, because... Let's see, it's 10 materials for a 2 meter long block that has 25 armor and 600 health. Uh, that could be... that could be... exploity, I think. Like, if there's any tournaments going, uh, being hosted right now, I guarantee you some clever dick is gonna think of, uh, just making <laughs> a craft entirely out of ammo ejectors. It's simply because they're so cheap, but also they're just... Uh, they're so cheap, but like... I don't know, I need to dig out my old, uh, structural efficiency uh, formula again, because this seems, uh, quite... Uh, good for that, like, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, so, uh, you've got about 20 materials, uh, for a metal block, which is 2100 health, 15 armor, weight 160, uh, four, four meters of that, okay, you have way less health, you have 1200 health, but you've got a lot more armor. No armor stacking, though. Okay, it might be not that cheaty, but that's the first thing I thought of. It was like, whoa, that's really cheap. That's a bargain, that is. Okay, and also, while we're doing stuff, uh, weak... Uh, this is a very interesting thing. Oh, wait, before that, flak radius from times 3 to times 3.5, uh, presumably compared to HE rounds. So, if we replace this with HE heads... Uh, radius of 5.3. Replace that with flak. Do, 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 do. Uh, 5.3 times... What? Times 3.5. Uh, not quite, actually. Uh, doesn't seem that much times 3.5. I already forgot the numbers. Basically, flak has a bigger radius now. Once again, making it uh, more useful against uh, for anti-missile purposes. And uh, an interesting note is that weak APS nose components explode against armor. Uh, what that means is, is that anything that has an armor pierce modifier, or like a shell health change by factor of 0.5, um, I think it's 0.1, is it? Shell health. Aha. Okay, so shell health modifier. Brr, brr, brr. Oh, hello. Nope. No, that's not it. Speed modifier. Health. Uh, yeah. So uh, it means that uh, like things with a low health modifier, like uh, all these uh, chemical uh, heads, he, uh, frag, and all that kind of stuff, 
Uh, they can explode against armor rather than ricocheting because, well, they're soft and squishy. Uh, I'm not sure I like that because it makes inertial fuses uh, completely and utterly uh, useless. They were already uh, pretty not helpful before, so because uh, squash heads and shape charge heads uh, detonate against uh, armor anyway uh, without any need for inertial fuses. Uh, shields are crap, presumably. The uh, shields haven't been changed, they're still bad. Uh, they still let an awful lot of shells through, and it's just... Yeah, so, like, is there absolutely no point to inertial fuses now? Like, I guess if you want your shell to explode on water a lot, but, yeah, so inertial fuses are absolutely useless now. There's, it, like, I haven't tested it, uh, how these soft heads... Uh, how frequently they detonate against armor. Presumably, uh, they need to hit at almost a perfect right angle in order to do that. But, yeah, so inertial fuses are pretty much dead. Like, there's no point to them anymore. Is what I'm assuming just from reading uh, these patch notes. Okay, so, uh, what else, what else? So, if we go up here on our EQUs, uh, muzzle brakes have been tweaked. So, with a muzzle brake, absorbed recoil doesn't exert any physical force on the firing vehicle. Uh, what? Instead of one quarter of the original force, slightly reduces shell speed. So basically, uh, the muzzle brake doesn't uh, reduce recoil exactly. So, on here. So it doesn't reduce, reduce recoil, but what it does do is what recoil is left uh, doesn't exert any physical force on the vehicle, which means uh, it's great for... Uh, weapons for APS that has really strong recoil and you put them on a light craft and like it's harder to get them to do backflips these days but uh, it can still happen so muzzle brakes once again have a use I, I haven't used them in absolute ages simply because uh, recoil absorbers do a good enough job for the most part and also just uh, the physical uh, well the physical force exerted by recoil it has been uh, reduced considerably since the big APS update, but uh, muzzle brakes uh, have a roll back here now. Do do do, and uh, yeah. So generally, APS is uh, more tougher. Uh, you've got slightly more options. Uh, Seawiz is once again been buffed, and on to something else now. So let us delete everything again. Spawn in a prefab hole. Gods, I love the prefab hole thing. It's so nice. It's like. Just for demonstration purposes, I can just instantly, like, plop down a hull just to talk about it. I don't have to waste time building one. That's so nice! But in any case, uh, in build mode, and we're, like, did I mention my notes are out of order? They're very out of order. Um, there is now an instant fill uh, for uh, building stuff. So if we go here, uh, in the old days, you'd get the nice uh, typewriter sound. But uh, now, uh, this is instant. Whoopsies. Aha, not instant enough. Let's do this. Or let's just do this. Instant! No need to wait around, there it goes. Which is lovely because, w once again, this speeds up building something lovely. Like, you don't have to wait around. It just means that uh, you don't... Yeah, you'd... It's less time wasted. And that's a fantastic thing, because, uh... No one likes having their time wasted. It's not fun. And, uh... Also mirrored prefab. So, if we have a prefab... Let's have a prefab. And uh, let's have a tiny steam generator. So, this is something that was annoying me for a long time. Uh, they've been working on this, and in the vanilla game, what would happen is... You place a prefab in mirror mode... It would not place in the spots that you uh, have, uh, that you wanted to go. It would instead only place the mirrored version. That has been fixed. Mirrored prefabs are now a thing. It is fantastic. Um, like, honestly, should have been in the game years ago. But now it is here, and I am a happy man thanks to that. So, yeah, that's awesome. And what the... What the balls... What the balls? I have to save note twice. This is the camera again. Oh yes, the key mapper has a dedicated window. So if you go here, key mapping. By the way, uh, if you're watching these videos and you want to ask in the comments, uh, like what uh, what key does what, uh, don't. 
Uh, key mapping is right here in the options menu. Uh, you don't need to ask anyone. It's all here. Like, literally everything is here. So, yeah, you can, if you want to change something, uh, next song, keypad plus. This now has a dedicated window, and it will cancel in blah 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 seconds. And let's count down to one, boop, which is nice and handy. I, not a feature I ever requested, but apparently a lot of these new features uh, have been gotten from the request tracker, which I've forgotten the link to, but it exists, uh, and the devs are listening to us, which is fantastic. Okay, in the other, in other news, in the countermeasures section, uh, you have stuff like this, and the power consumption is a thing. Let us uh, stick a battery. Let's uh, resource. Let's drop a prefab down here. And ta-da! What the? Uh, still does that, unfortunately. That is annoying. Okay, so heat decoy, current temperature, blah blah blah. Target power use ten. Uh, current power 10. Alrighty, so, countermeasures, power use of decoys is down to 20%, which is great. Uh, so use 10 power per second, say, use... Uh, 500 power per second. So that now, uh, basically these things are a lot more useful because they use a lot less power. You can get uh, some serious decoy strength out of them. Uh, same with the radar decoy. Uh, 10 power per second. And current detection range increased by 50 meters. Okay, that's nice. Uh, let's set that to 100. Using 100 power per second. A chance to draw radar missiles from the given directions is like pretty much 100%. Like now with this. That is great. That is really good. It means uh, this will definitely make uh, small planes uh, once again viable because uh, you can just stick uh, decoys on them and missiles get uh, drawn to funny parts of the plane. And that's really cool. And do, 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 do. here's a bit I don't actually understand that much, but I will read it out anyway. Uh, out of play retrofits uh, work like in play retrofits. Uh, retrofits keep processed resources. Which is uh, a good thing because I believe what was happening is that uh, when you retrofit a craft, it uh, was just kind of uh, just converting all processed resources like ammo and fuel uh, into regular materials. Uh, which was not, uh, is a bad thing, because, uh, as I will show you later, ammo and fuel is kind of time-consuming to produce, and if you've got it, you want to keep it as much as possible. Okay, next note, I dropped my pen on the floor. I'm a failure! Ugh. Okay, and another thing is that those of you who think alloy is useless, uh, wrong, it's gotten a health buff. So... Alloy block health increased from 260 to 300, which uh, puts the health of alloy beams up to 1800 from what I think was something like 1560 or something like that. I don't remember, but alloy is tougher, so encouraging people to use alloy. It's actually pretty darn strong now, it's like almost as strong as metal, but being much lighter. I love alloy. Alloy is really good. Okay, missiles now. Lots of missiles. Cluster missiles. Let's go stick this on the front because that's a good idea. I'm sure it won't look weird. Oh, hello. That's weird. Like, bang on a minute. Oh yeah, I haven't got any ammo. I have no ammunition. Let us fix that. Resources. Oh yeah, you can place uh, empty versions of all uh, stuff, pretty much. So, empty ammo boxes, empty fuel boxes, all that kind of stuff. Assuming you want to build in the campaign on a budget. Let's see here. Okay, that's working now. That was bizarre. Like, hang on, let's see if that works uh, for something else. For another missile prefab. So, laser thing. The blazing glory, which I keep calling the morning glory, which is not correct. That's weird! 
it's actually functional, which is great, but that's weird. That's so weird, dude. Anyway, so uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, so all uh, Merv components, uh, which basically means uh, the uh, what is it? Multiple, uh, multiple idiot uh, retroactive velocity. Oh no, I don't remember what Merv stands for. Cluster missiles, all cluster missile components. Uh, cost considerably less ammo than they did before. So you can look at the fuel tank there, uh, ammo cost is 160, but uh, these things cost very little ammo indeed, which encourages you uh, to use cluster missiles. It also means that uh, cluster missiles don't use too much ammo just because, I don't know, you're holding stuff. Uh, all MERV components have high health, so uh, health is a lot of health, oh my god. So fuel tank has about 48, uh, 4,800 health on a large missile. Uh, 12,000 health for uh, cluster missile components, which is pretty darn... Uh, that's a lot of health. Uh, these things are going to be really hard to shoot down. I guess that's why SeaWiz was getting a buff. So, yeah, these things already had a very good uh, niche in terms of... Uh, just uh, in terms of... Uh, words, order-wise, do you remember how to use them? In terms of just getting through uh, anti-missile systems, uh, now they're even better at it. So that is scary as hell. And intercept- oh jeez. Intercepted damage against large missiles is down from times 2 to uh, times 1.5. So interceptors are less effective against large missiles. Uh, missile health and intercepted damage down by 20%. So missile health is down a little bit, although you could have fooled me because large missiles still have insane amounts of health. Uh, for this, how many? How many? How many? One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, component long large missile, 45,600 health. That is a lot. And that is the reduced version, down by 20%. And you need uh, half the general purpose processing power needed for remote guided missiles, which is uh, freaking awesome. So let's test that. Remote guidance. So, GPP used, uh, you only need 9 for a large missile. That's nice. That's very nice. Because I never use them simply because general purpose processing power is expensive. In case you're wondering, uh, that's this card. It's 100 uh, for each, and each one only provides one uh, uh, general purpose processing power. So, you'll need 9 of these things to launch this missile. That's already expensive, and that's very expensive. I can keep saying the word expensive until everyone gets bored and leaves. Expensive, expensive, expensive. Okay. Modding. Uh, drag clearance list. Now, this is not something that uh, I have messed with because I am not a modder. I am not a... Uh... God, this boat looks weird. I am not a programming type person. I haven't tried making a mod yet because of, for, from the depths because that'll be a disaster. But uh, this boat just got pulled backwards, I just noticed. Oh well. Any case, so uh, when assigning like drag values to a block, uh, it used to be just a very short... Uh, I think it used to be just a, like two options long or something. Uh, now it's a list, which is much nicer because it means you can uh, fully flesh out uh, what your modded block is like. And now on to projectiles. APS and crime shells use the same detection scaling as missiles without thrust. Which hopefully means, so let's uh, get this guy, advanced scanners, advanced controller, for long, and let us have squash head. So detection range is pretty long. I think they can be detected from further away, I think. Detection range 187 meters. I don't remember. I think it's... they get detected... I don't remember what it was like before. Alright, let's uh, try... Let's pl plonk a heavy water and see if this causes our ship to sink. This is a uh, detection range of this... Oh dear, yeah, it's greatly reduced. Greatly, greatly reduced. Um. Not sure how this is helpful. Uh, basically, it means that lambs will have an even harder time with APS and crams than they were before. Even though it doesn't change that much because uh, 
Generally speaking, you don't want a lambs to shoot to further than 300 meters. Anyway, I'm not sure why this is a thing, but it's a thing. Same value. So basically, it spots uh, incoming shells the same way it spots incoming missiles. So consistency at the very least. And what else? What else? What else? The font is sharper. So you might be noticing that uh, all the uh, writing and stuff is a little bit sharper, a little bit clearer. So you can see what you're doing. And also, you can set things to multiple weapon groups. Uh, can assign multiple weapon slots to weapons. I don't... Uh, that doesn't appear to be working for me, or I'm an idiot. This weapon will respond with any of the... Okay, so I can only select one of these. I'm not sure if that's meant to be a thing. I suspect it is not, because it is complete opposite of what the patch notes are saying. There's also a huge amount of bug fixes. Too many for me to go into any detail. Basically, a lot of things that were buggy have been fixed. Hopefully that includes uh, the one where uh, local weapon controllers won't fire cluster missiles, because uh, that makes me very sad. And uh, let's just stick an AI down here, because I want to see that for myself. So let's go here, AI, and basic AI, prefab, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. So let us do that and let us do this and will these things fire no because i just spawned in a lemicus that is uh, on my side why would i do that thing spawn in a marauder hello that appears to be firing like <laughs> It's a uh, can't it isn't firing anywhere, but uh, because uh, this thing has no detection. But uh, I wonder if this cram board is actually going to hit. This thing has no detection systems. That is uh, not going to hit at, or is it? Oh my god, this would be no. It isn't going to hit. That would be very silly. Okay, so that appears to be working at the very least with this prefab. Wait, that's not a cluster missile. What the hell was I doing? It's not controlled by AI. Let's test that again. The neck neck paddy whack. Give it a ball. Oh hey, that did it. And uh, it dropped its mines way too early. Uh, Ninja, why you do this, Ninja? Great, so that works. Uh, I look forward to seeing how that doesn't work for me when I try building uh, cluster missiles again. What was I doing? Do, 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 do. Anyway, okay, so a number of things have been removed. So if we go to the uh, uh, character screen, like uh, the avatar minor skill efficiency multiplier has been removed. Uh, da, 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 da. I think, what's it? Avatar, faction buffs. Personal buffs, captain buffs. Yeah, I think. Where is it? Minor? We talk about seismic scanning. All right. So because uh, basically the thing that allows you to gather more resources faster, the multiplier has been uh, removed. Although I'm, I haven't looked at the screen in so long, I can't even remember uh, where the minor thing was. Engineer, I think was it here? I don't even remember. Do, do, do. In any case, that's been removed because it'll bollocks up by the way the campaign works now. Uh, building mode checklist replaced by block searcher, we've already covered that. Uh, centralized resources has been removed from the game completely. I'm kind of sad about this, but at the same time, it means that the uh, AI and the player are now on equal footing. You're stuck using localized resources, and just it adds a lot of the uh, strategical logistics and stuff. Uh, to the campaign, which it kind of needed, if I'm being perfectly honest. Uh, materials now used for AI building, so the AI will use materials in the campaign in order to build their forces. Uh, so the whole points thing, uh, so like uh, you can see this, uh, there used to be like campaign points uh, in this thing, that's been removed. Uh, it's pure material costs now. 
And placing removing blocks no longer wipes info of altitude and speed. So uh, it used to be the case that if you spawn in a craft and if you edit it in any way, it would reset uh, the saved uh, altitude and max speed things. Like, uh, yeah, like this thing here, performance figures, it would reset that to default uh, anytime you edit it. Uh, it doesn't do that anymore, it'll actually save it. So, I believe if I spawn in a thing like this, this is the thing I've been using in my Wii campaign. Yep, it saves that even though it's been modified uh, multiple times. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Dracaena is now wiggling in excitement because uh, it'll get to be shown off uh, very, very soon. And let's go do that. Let's go load the campaign I was playing with. So, I'm already loving this. So, here's my campaign tester. Load it. Let's see if it happens. And we get to show off what's going on here. So, this is the new campaign map. If you haven't seen this before, welcome. Every faction has its own territory. And, uh... Yeah, they all kind of fight each other as well. They have their own alliances and own projects and all that kind of stuff. And this is neutral ground over here. All that stuff. The white flares are aggressive as hell, by the way. They always seem to like to push north. And, whoa, hello. What is that? What's that one guy doing there? Okay, that's interesting. Interesting, interesting. Bunch of new campaign vehicles added as well. Uh, yeah, the, the white flares just seem to be produce forces really fast. And uh, yeah, going concern. The Scarlet Dawn apparently are going to get some special features added to them. Uh, to allow them to uh, uh, be more of a threat. Because currently they co don't control much territory. And all their stuff's expensive. So uh, they have kind of a problem. And uh, the white flares are scary as hell because they expand in all directions very fast. And the deep water guard is uh, the first thing you run into. Also, in the campaign at the moment, they like spamming small craft repeatedly. And so here's uh, what we're doing over here. And this, uh, you might be wondering, what the hell is this thing I built? I built this in about five minutes because my regular fortress is no longer good enough because it doesn't produce fuel. And uh, so when you spawn new craft in, they do not come with ammo or fuel or battery power. They uh, must uh, have it uh, passed on to them from another fleet, or they must produce it themselves. So, uh, sport, you'll notice that uh, this uh, Task Force 1, these Dracaenas here, uh, they don't have uh, full uh, ammo, ammo or fuel, and uh, that's because they've had to be filled up slowly uh, by my fortresses here. And we've got uh, a Lechwan over here, on the way over there. It also is a uh, uh, not got uh, that kind of thing. Why are you losing energy? That makes no sense. That is an issue. See, I'm going to have to change a lot of my designs in a very subtle way. Simply to get them, like, in fighting shape again. Because the new campaign does change a lot of things. It's like... You produce... Why don't you produce enough energy to keep yourself going, you bloody... What the hell? Why are you depleting that? Nick! That's a bug! This thing is filled with RTGs! It shouldn't do that! That's annoying. In any case, uh, we should build, just very quickly, over here... A blank thing. So... How much uh, materials have we got? lot of stuff so let us just quickly what is this what is this what is this do 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 hull prefabs let's just very quickly build medium wooden cargo do 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 and let's just do 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 And the radar. And we're gonna just fill this with uh, material storage and AI. No, I have a better idea. I have 
better idea. Let's do this. Pure AI shenanigans. Basic AI goes right here. And uh, behaviors is going to be broadside. Max, thank you. And set on water. Do, do, do. Allow reverse. New terrain prediction time. Maneuver. And it's a ship. And just very quickly. Do, do, do. Engine, Accessible batteries. And how much material do we have? Okay, uh, what's going on now? I think the deep water guard's mad at me. That's not good. That is no good. Where's the fuel? Where's the fuel? Here the fuel. Full of fuel? Full of fuel. And... Do, 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 do. Control seat. Boom. Here. Done! So now, this thing is going to be... Whoops, wrong thing. Do, do, do. Prototypes, uh, stage two. Now just do cargo vessels. Cargo. Mm. Port vessels. Quick cargo carrier. Now let's go here. Let's go here, you are one, and I want you to keep... Keep none. None, none, none. Wait, no, keep full of energy. And pull all. Wait, no. Wait, 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 wait. Nope. Listening. Form up. Moving and fly with fleet. Hmm, not enough RTGs. Easily fixed, easily fixed. And save it again. And pull all, and you, sir, go up here. Eat all that. Hello. Lifting, moving out. Moving nom 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 nom. Yay! And go drop it. Mega base. Now, just to finish off this video, we're gonna pick a fight with a river home. And you see here, uh, we're gauging from quite a long way away with our pair of Drakeanas. Uh, you'll see that uh, the river home is moving. Depending on the craft the AI is using, uh, they will move to their optimum uh, range to try and gauge you, and they'll react uh, to what you're doing. So, go here, go here, go here. There's a limit to how far they can come uh, towards you, by the way. Go here, hello. You want to be quite a long way away, which is very stupid, because... Uh, Drakeanas uh, are specifically designed to be good at long range. And uh, yeah, let's begin battle. This is going to be a curb stomp, uh, by the way. Because uh, Drakeanas are, well, I'm quite fond of this thing. This is, uh, this is about as canoe-like as I get, and it's really awesome. Oh yeah, you got, you got to move, guys. 
Uh, the river home has been updated, by the way, so uh, it's got cram cannons in that front shield uh, rather than anything else. It's moving also quite fast, and I think it's going to get AI deaded. Like, really fast. Or not. Sir, what are you doing? No. I uh, thought you guys were meant to be... Oh, these guys are naval. Why are they naval? Well, this is the first time I've had some campaign footage in a long while, and yes, yes it does feel good. Uh, we'll, uh, yeah, you're gonna run... No, you're not gonna run aground. That's very nice. AI's been improved a little bit. Might still take a while. But yeah, like, uh... Stuff has been disabled pretty quickly by these guys. So yeah, this is uh, this is the new campaign. It's much more strategic. It's much more involved. And it's just uh, it's a good time. So yeah, this is probably not going to be very eventful to watch for the most part. So, and yes, I do plan on putting up uh, campaign something uh, as soon as I can, be it streams or videos or something like that. So. Look forward to that. I'm looking forward to it. Hope you are too. That is from the depths uh, version ah! 2.6.1.4 in the dev test. Uh, go play with it. It's great. Oh, the battle finished. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon if you like. It really helps. And I will thank you to all my current Patreon supporters. And I will see you next time in From the Depths for more. Fun stuff. Now the update's here. Farewell.